Well, memories are powerful and last for most a lifetime. They can even define our character. But according to author Dr. Julia Shaw, they are far from being the accurate record of the past we'd like to think. She joins us now to talk about her new book, The Memory Illusion, Why You Might Not Be Who You Think You Are. That's even tough to say uh, <laughs> because it really made me think. Uh, reading this book, uh, you kind of break open the door in terms of how people think their memories are. Mm -hmm. Why is this important? It's important to understand, well, I mean, something you use every day, right? Your memory is something you rely on as you're walking out the house. You're, you're saying, this is what I need to do today. Then later on, you're telling a story about your childhood. Then you're going and talking about a, a party you went to last week. I mean, the, it ranges in terms of how far back we go. But every single day, you're relying on your brain to give you an accurate representation of the past. And yet, science clearly shows that it's not very reliable. Well, it makes it sound like we're all kind of lying. Well, we're not lying, so it's not intentional. <laughs> no, not intentional, yeah, it's not intentional. But, but it's not true necessarily what we think happened. Well, it, it challenges our notion of what, it, what truth means as well, I think. So, I mean, I don't like the idea of a single reality. I, I think that to be is to be perceived, and the only thing you can, can be certain of is that this is your version of the truth essentially. Uh, and so our memories and research on uh, false memories would show that we routinely believe that we did things that never happened. Um, they really, it really shows that all kinds of fiction is woven into our personal past. And being aware of this fallibility and being aware of this process, I think, can really enhance our quality of life. It's fascinating. I mean, you start from the moment of uh, people who think they remember being born, as so you sort of start right into it and get going. One of the stories that stood out to me, Brian Williams, uh, the NBC anchor, that story that went uh, made international headlines about being in a helicopter, and mm. everyone jumped on him for, for lying and for exaggerating the truth. And you're almost stating the case, you're almost giving a bit of a break. Well, I'm saying that we don't know. You don't know. So, and this is something that I, that I think this research really highlights, is that you should be, be kind when people say things that aren't true and don't just jump to the conclusion that they must be lying. And just because it's self-aggrandizing, just because it makes you look good, doesn't, uh, that doesn't mean either that you're necessarily lying. Um, the, the problem is that false memories and lies look, look the same to the observer. So the why? Only person who why knows does that happen? It's the person who's telling it. Why does it happen? Because our brains are creative and flexible, and memories are associations in the brain. And the network that is a memory uh, fun fact it's not just one part of the brain that's your memories it, it's actually a web of, and you go of through cells. that as well I do go through yes. that a little bit I yes. try to not get too neurosciencey no you don't uh, which makes it a good read actually for schmoes <laughs> like me to be able to get through it well thanks yeah it's supposed to be more applied but you need a little bit of the the theory so you can take this information and apply it to lots of different things that you're you're talking and thinking about but the reason it, it works the reason we have these memory illusions is because this network can be messed with. And so every time you tell a story, you're reactivating it and it actually changes slightly. Or the, the, a, a saying I like to say here is that, you know, you know, every time you tell a story, it gets better. Well, that's essentially what's happening is you're, you're, miss, you're losing pieces, you're adding pieces, someone else tells you a detail, you add it in. And so you've got these little pieces of, that are constantly evolving. Chop and channel. Uh, what makes it, uh, what do you hope people can do with this information in terms of bettering their lives then? I hope that people can understand that they're not alone. So quite often people will tell me, I, I, t it's sort of double-sided, because as you said, it can be terrifying, sort of what is real, who am I, um, which sort of can induce an existential crisis. But I'm okay. I think it's good to ask You're questions. okay if people go through that. Yeah. I think it's important. Uh, but on the other hand, people go, besides the most thing I find most disturbing about your book, they go, I was hugely comforted. It's not just me. Because I thought I was losing my memory. I thought it was just me who couldn't remember names or misremembered stuff. So I think that there is a beauty in understanding that the normalcy of misremembering and the flexibility of memory. And without this flexibility, we wouldn't be human. We couldn't problem solve. We couldn't be creative. We, you need to be able to flexibly connect things in the brain. And that's, that's essentially what the book shows you. Very cool. A, a great read. Really appreciate your time. Thanks so much. And uh, you can catch Dr. Julia Shaw at a speaking event tonight at 7 o'clock at the Calgary Public Library at the John Dutton Theatre.